Welcome to Moon Harbor Heroes. Today's issue is Storyteller, Issue 9, First Day of School. On the cover, Max, Amber, and Squire stand, in matching school uniforms, at a large wrought iron gate. Woven into the iron of the gate are words that read, Paradigm Academy. We turn the page and our story begins. The first panel of our comic opens up on the storyteller in his study. There's a large wheeling chalkboard covered in complex mathematical problems. He consults a comic book in his hand and turns back, scribbling a few more equations down. With his back still to us, he begins to speak. Saving is tough, and our heroes will learn. Just what happens when you let powers burn out of control, and the backlash is swift. Normally jail time, but will give you a gift. You can find yourself somewhere unknown to you, a school on a lake shining crystalline blue. So go off to Paradigm and please learn the rules in this newest issue, First Day of School. He turns back to us, snapping his fingers. As he does, the chalkboard flips over and we see a chalk-drawn illustration of our cover. We then turn the page and our story begins. This issue opens up on the very end of the fight from issue two. It has been pretty seriously restructured. We see like a we see a panel of the clown like taking the two of you by the collars and like throwing you backwards. We see like a little bit more chaos and stuff getting like destroyed in the lobby of the movie theater. And then we see a panel where the two of you just like pull back your fist and throw it forward. And we see Ali going flying through the big glass doors of the movie theater. You all step through the doors and then behind you, the movie theater just cracks and completely just falls down. Ali or movie girl, as we know her cinema, as we will know her later is unconscious on the ground. And the two of you look up to see Missing Lynx standing there, her mouth just wide open at the sheer amount of destruction you just caused. What do you do? Honestly, I think I'm kind of frozen just looking back and forth between Lynx and this collapsed movie theater. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, I think we get just a couple panels of both of us like darting, like looking back and forth between like Lynx, the movie theater... Max looks at Allie, then Max looks at Amber and goes, I, I just got my first kiss. I, I hold up my hand very slowly for a high five. We look at three panels, super slow high five. <laughs> and as soon as you bring your hands down, we see a panel of Squire stumbling out of the wreckage. And she like holds up a thumbs up and then collapses. She looks okay, but she looks beaten up. And then Missing Links comes up to the two of you and she's like, what the hell did you do? We stopped the villain. She points at Allie on the ground and she's like, that's a 14-year-old girl. What villain did you stop? I mean, her, her powers were kind of under, not under control. Uh, and now she's, I mean, she's knocked out, but she's not hurting anybody. So that's a positive. She looks at the two of you and she's like, do you know how many people could have been hurt? Listen, we can't have this kind of destruction in Moon Harbor. We knew you two were a wild card, but unless you get some serious training, you are not allowed to be on the streets. I'm putting in a call into Glacier right now and suggesting that you two be officially made blacklisted unless you go to some sort of training academy or program. Can we get a panel of Max and Amber just looking at each other with like a very yikes look on their faces? Love it. And then the next thing we see is uh, the two of you in Glacier's office. We've actually never seen this in the Cataclysm crew line. We've seen it in a couple other other issues of other comics, uh, but we've not seen Glacier's office. It's very standard, very elegant, professional looking office. And she has a flyer in her hand that she offers out to you. And she says, we've talked to them and we're managed to make it so you both could go tuition free. It is a one year program for a reform school. And your options either are, you go here for the year, you get your powers and yourself under control, and then you can come back and be heroes again. Or you stop heroing and I never see your faces on the street. And then she pauses and she's like, I mean, or the other option is to go the same route of, of people like Traceless, for instance. And she looks at Makina. 
And she's like, and become a villain. But we all know that that's not what you want. So, you know the terms. You can make whatever decision you'd like, but I hope that you take our advice. And she hands you the flyer. And can we get like an overhead panel of the flyer with like all three of ours, Max, Amber, and um, Squire's heads peeking over at it? Yeah, and across the top we see the text, Paradigm Academy. Amber looks up at Max and just like, well, uh, I guess we gotta go ask our parents about this. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Yeah, mine totally doesn't know that I do any super stuff. Maybe you can forge a signature? I mean, you can't really get that mad at you for it. Yeah, I'm in. Let's go. And Glacier looks at the two of you and like cocks an eyebrow. And then she sighs and she's like, I'll send a car for your clothes. And then the two of you can head right on the way. We've got a car waiting downstairs to take you to the airport. And then she says... You'll really like Paradigm. I went there, and it is a really amazing school. I think this would be good for the two of you. Do they let raccoons on planes? She pauses, and she's like, I mean, we're flying via saber jet, so it's not exactly a regular plane. Squire will be allowed to come. Okay, that's good to know. Squire is allowed on all saber jets. She's allowed on this saber jet in this one instance. We will reevaluate as we need. And then I think we cut to another shot of you all looking back down at the brochure. And then we follow that same image, the brochure in your hands. And we cut to that same shot, but this time not in the brochure on the campus. It's like the shot of like the main academic building. And it's a beautiful like lush green hill with an old building on it. Then in the next panel, the brochure is removed and the grass covers the whole panel and we get this like really lovely shot of Paradigm Academy in the early fall. We cut into the vice principal's office. And the first thing we see is a shot of him sitting behind a desk. And he's got like kind of a pretty massive monologue bubble saying, Now, Max, Amber, we are very glad to have you here at Paradigm. We are excited by what Glacier has told us and by your prospects in strength and heroism. However, there are a few rules that you must follow. As with all students at the beginning of their tenure here who are referred by law enforcement or such other agencies, you have a six-month probation period where you are not allowed to leave the island. Uh, As you know, Paradigm Academy is in an island in the middle of Zenith Bay. You flew over the bay to get here. You are not allowed to go to the city across the way. We have all the stories you will need here. We've got entertainment on the island. There's a pier where you can go and do arcade games and such but other than that any leaving the island is strictly off limits and then he turns and he looks at the two of you and he says there are a lot of people with powers here but there are also a lot of people and he focuses specifically on max and he's like who use what gifts they naturally have to become the best heroes they can be you don't have to be a powered individual to succeed at paradigm You don't have to be Paradigm or the Golden Scepter. We want to bring out the heroism that exists within you. And he looks specifically at Max and he's like, I find myself often championing the powerless heroes among us. So Max, if you need anything, please let me know. And we get a pullback shot and we see his desk and we see his name. His name is Norman Parr. He's wearing a plaid vest he's very thin wiry his eyes are kind of sunken in cropped hair he looks like a typical stressed out teacher and he kind of sits down and he's like so do you two have any questions the panel turns and we get a shot of the three of you the two of you in like regular sized chairs and squire in it and squire in a smaller chair can i make an adjustment please because i think max is pacing behind his chair and squire is sitting in his chair Fantastic. Amber's kind of like slumped. She's like not sitting super straight. Like she's like, looks like she's paying attention, but it's just not like she's got, does not have good posture. And he looks between the two of you and he's like, so does that mean there are no questions? I I gotta say, I, I like you. You're a lot more supportive than Lynx. He smiles and he's like, missing Lynx is a hero through and through. She is 
passionate and excited and a bit of a hard ass sometimes, but she means well and she does what she does because she cares, but also she pushes herself too hard. I don't think she understands that she has natural heroism inside of her and that she doesn't need to push it. But here at Paradigm, we want to bring that out in both of you. It's not about how many powers you have. It's not about how well you can use your powers. It's about your smarts, it's about your brains, and it's about your heart. And your raccoon. I gave Squire a little high five. Raccoons are a pretty cool power. He smiles and he's like, we have a lot of people with super pets here. Uh, You'll probably meet Michael at some point. He has a dog. Uh, His name is Sparky. So you'll fit in very well here, Max. And he turns to Amber and he's like, and Amber, you will too. We've got a massive tech-based component. We'll make sure you get in contact with Cece, who's one of our students, and she's basically living technology. So we'll make sure that you get in contact with the right people and find the right group to be with. Uh, Amber's sitting up straight now and totally paying attention at the, at the when he started that, addressing her and talking about tech. Yeah, that sounds that that sounds awesome. And then he looks down at his watch and he's like, "We have time for a really quick tour, and then everyone will probably be gathering for dinner soonish." Okay. And he stands up and heads towards the door. And I think we cut from there directly over. I think we get a montage of him showing you around campus. We get a shot of like the academic buildings. We get a shot of the tech center. We get a shot of the like training hall, like the uh, gym and training rooms and those kinds of things. And then the last thing we see is the three of you outside the dining hall. And it's starting to get a little bit dark out. It's starting to be like evening time-ish. And he says, now, I want the two of you to have fun. Don't push yourselves too hard. You'll make friends in no time, I'm sure. If either of you need anything, you have my emails, and you can stop by at any time. My office is open during regular office hours. Max and Amber, as you walk into the dining hall, there's an older boy sitting off to one side. I like He's not sitting off to one side. He's like floating off to one side. He's floating, and he glows like this like vibrant pink color. Um, and he's floating near a table. And he says kind of loudly and obnoxiously, he's like, so which one of them is the normie? And there's a girl who's sitting about four people away and her arm like is elastic and it stretches and she slaps him on the shoulder. And she says, hey, we don't use that word. And then he rolls his eyes and was like, whatever, fine, a civilian. Which one of them do you think doesn't have powers? And then like the table starts like whispering and kind of looking at you and you two are starting a little bit late into the semester. So like you two are clearly like the new kids and like a lot of eyes are on you. Uh, What do you do? At first, I want to point out that, like, Squire is on my shoulder, and she is definitely in, like, full plaid uniform. So I just need that image out there. A little raccoon, buddy. Perfect. Amber's going to turn over to Squire and be like, it's okay, Squire, don't let them get to you. Yeah, Squire, it's okay that you don't have powers. We love you anyway. So where do we sit? This is kind of overwhelming. I have no idea honestly so if you look there's a table kind of like in the center but a little bit closer to like where the like the food is there's like a buffet on the back wall and then in the center of the room kind of closest to that there's a table that's pretty much empty it's a smaller table probably seats about five and there is nothing going on there so if you want to go grab that seat you could or you could try to like find a group to sit with oh my god max they have a best they have a buffet it's not just you get these servings and you're done they have a buffet. Maybe we should blow up movie theaters more often. Excellent. And as you say that, you hear this like loud voice being like, oh my God, no, you're wrong. That's no, absolutely not. And we get a shot over to a table. Longtime readers of Paradigm Academy will know these women and one man sitting at a table as girl power. It is a group of four women and one man. The one who just spoke was Glam Glow Girl, or Triple G, who's kind of like the head bitch of the group. Uh, That is the words that were used in Paradigm. Uh, I'm just quoting. There is Sword Girl, who has a lot of swords. Flower Girl, who's like super, super short and has a bunch of... She's very like... She's dressed like a flower girl. And then Fire Boy Girl, who is the boy in the group, uh, who has fire powers, was Fire Boy, then joined Girl Power, and is now Fire Boy Girl. And then our fifth member, who is Riot Girl. Right, girl, you have just heard Sword Girl filling everyone in about how 
There's a ghost on campus and everyone has heard the rumors that Echo Caverns is haunted. And Glam Glow Girl does not believe that. She's like, that was who she, she was saying, like, oh my God, no, you're wrong. Riot Girl, what do you do? So just to set the scene a little bit, Riot Girl would have would have her feet like up on the lunch table, like like sprawled out across like a couple of chairs. And uh, she is just watching in disbelief as they're as they're having this conversation, uh, holding a Swiss cake roll and just kind of slowly nibbling on it. And when Glam Glow Girl blows up, I think that her first reaction is just like, well, uh, of course they're not real. Uh, th- there's no such thing as ghosts, first of all. So let's just let's just put that to bed right now. All right. There's no such thing as ghosts. Echo caverns are not haunted. Quinn, you're pretty close to there. Yeah, I was about to say, do I hear this? I was about to say, you're sitting at <laughs> like, the next table over. Do you react to there? there's no such thing as ghosts? I think so. I think that there's definitely going to be this scene of me just kind of like turning around and just being like, well, uh, like I know a ghost. So I, I think she's going to be a little bit disappointed to hear that she doesn't exist. And we get a pullback shot of the two tables next to each other with uh, Amber, Max, and Squire in the background of it. And it is the girl power table, and then Quinn and Charlie are at the next table over. And Glam Glow Girl's like, look, even Quinn believes me. Like, we know that there are ghosts here. It's fine. But like, Echo Caverns is not haunted, even if ghosts are real, that's not a thing. I mean, we could just find out. Yeah, I mean, are you prepared to put your money where your mouth is? Flower Girl, like, jumps up on the seat, and she's like, hell yeah, I'm ready to put my money where my mouth is. Absolutely, let's go. And Glam Glow Girl's like, I mean, yeah, okay, but, like, we're not supposed to be, like, wandering around campus late at night, and the sounds are happening late at night, so... So what? Just, like, who cares? Or are you too scared? That sounds like you're provoking Glam Glow Girl. Can you go ahead and roll a provoke for me? Sure. That's a nine. <laughs> Excellent. On a seven and nine, they can instead choose one. I think you see her face turn like bright red. And she's like, I am not scared, Charlie. Of course, I'm not scared of a ghost. Like, it's not like, whatever. Like, I'm never, I'm not scared of anything. And that was her overreacting. And you get gain influence over her. Nice. Thomas, please let this be canon so I can mess with her in our real game. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll see excellent and then the next thing that happens we see fireboy girl look up and notices amber and max staring at the group and is like hey do you think we should get the new kids involved and flower girl immediately is like yeah let's get the new kids involved why not new kids get over here and she like gestures for you all to come sit and there's not space at the girl power table but there is space at the table with charlie and quinn I would like to add into this panel that we have totally gone to the buffet and loaded up our plates with a lot of food. Oh, yeah. I think as we're walking over, like, I'm going to say to Amber, this is so much better than Moon Harbor Public. I mean, food and ghost hunts. Does does Squire have, like, a mini plate? I think it's a normal size plate. That's very important information that we needed to know. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for a ghost hunt. And Sword Girl is like, well... The sounds only start at like 11.30 or so at night. So we'll have to agree to meet up here later. We're not going to like start it now. But like, do you have names? Who are you? What are your, what's your powers? Hi, I'm Max. Or wait, do we use nicknames or Nicholas names here? Superhero names? Or, I'm Rascal King. I'm going to hold up my hand to shake. Uh, I don't have the canon names for girl power for the people names. Do they have canon names yet? Uh, no, we never got, we never got that far to give them names. I just get, I just gave Riot Girl a name. So I think, I think probably what happens is like the rest of the girls are very hesitant to shake Rascal King's hand because, uh, he's got a raccoon on his shoulder and I think Cassidy gets up and walks over and she's got this giant gauntlet on her hand and she reaches over and grabs Max's hand and says, you can just use regular people names here. Uh, I'm Cassidy. 
Oh my god, that thing is so cool. Oh yeah, thanks. Hi, uh, this is Squire, and this is Amber. Hi. Well, uh, welcome to Paradigm Academy, I guess. Uh, you two seem to be enjoying yourselves already. I mean, they said it was a punishment, but it's been nice. Yeah, if there's ghosts, I'm interested. <laughs> You're not the first ones are here for, who are here for a punishment, and Cassidy motions over to the other table uh, with Charlie and Quinn. We blew up a neighborhood. Oh, uh, we just blew up a theater. Amber's got her hand up for a high five. <laughs> there is 100% high fiving going on. Amazing. Did you guys get to meet Paradigm yet? Not yet. Oh, they're really cool. But it's like, the school's actually pretty cool. It's pretty laid back. It's like, by the way, I'm Calico. And I'm just going to kind of like motion at Charlie. And I'm just going to be like, brush. Brush. I'm- I mean, I, yeah, I'm Charlie. I just thought when you, like, motioned to me, you were going to just, like, introduce me, but hi, I'm Charlie. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Amber. That's Max and Squire. I think Squire runs up to, for a handshake. To who? Who are you? Who is Squire shaking hands with? That table, so it'd be Charlie or Quinn. Fantastic. I think Squire goes up to Charlie first. And is, is Squire, like, trying to shake my hand with her little paw yep she definitely is yeah oh my god i'm in love um i will shake her hand as well i'll look at max and be like what's her name she's squire hi squire you're adorable and i love you she's good at fighting too so That's she's awesome. our most competent team member <laughs> <laughs> That's just true. hey where's your buddy short circuit when you need him huh that's his name, right? Short Circuit? Do you mean Livewire? Oh, right. Livewire, yeah. He's got a he's got a animal, too, right? He's got a dog. His name is oh, Sparky. that's right. Oh, I heard about Dog Boy. Livewire. Oh. Yeah, that's a cooler name. But I have pets, too. And I'm just gonna, like, summon my, like, spectral cats. Oh, Amber's got a huge grin on her face. Are these the full, like, Jaguars? Are they, like, house cat size when you first bring them up? Uh... I imagine they're going to be, like, house cat size when I first bring them out, so I don't, like, scare the raccoon. Like, that's literally the only reason. Fantastic. I don't want to scare Squire. I want a tiny little handshake. Oh, phenomenal. Uh, Squire goes over and, like, runs her hand through the, like, psychic fur. And then she turns to Quinn and puts her hand out for a handshake. I've been chosen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Squire a tiny little handshake. And then she hops back up on Max's shoulder and offers her hand to Cassidy. Cassidy, like, instead of instead of actually reaching out for a handshake, she just, like, extends her index and her index finger and her thumb and just grabs ra- or grabs Squire's little paw and just gently shakes. Sorry, my hands aren't meant for dainty work. <laughs> and behind you, you hear Triple G, a glam glow girl, go, Oh my god, that's so cute. A rodent at the dinner table. How precious. And Flower Girl's like, I think she's cool. And then Glam Girl Girl's like, shut up, Flower Girl. And then Glam Girl Girl goes and is like, hi, I'm Glam Glow Girl. This is Sword Girl. This is Flower Girl. And this is Fire Boy Girl. We're the girl power team. And we kind of run this school. So, hi. Welcome. Right, girl, do you want to sit down? You're standing between the two tables. Oh, yeah, sorry. I Sometimes I forget that I'm seven feet tall and I block things. And <laughs> Cassidy sits down. <laughs> Excellent. And then Sword Girl, like, we don't know when she pulled two, like, knives out of pockets, but all of a sudden she's got, like, knives and she's, like, scratching on the table of, like, a map of how to get to Echo Caverns. And she's like, all right, so... If you meet us here, and she draws, like, the word food and, like, a box around it, and she's like, if you meet us here, we can follow this path, which will take us to the cliff sides, and then we have to get down the cliff sides to the entrance of the Echo Caverns. You can't swim in, you have to, like, fly in or scale the cliff in, so hopefully someone here has the ability to help with that. The sounds have been starting at, like, 11.30, so we probably want to meet at, like, 11.15 to have time to walk across there if we want to try to get there on time so that's the plan any questions 
And to emphasize any questions, she takes the knife and just like stabs it into the table. I'm going to point at the map and go, where's Echo Caverns? I don't know this place at all. I have a, actually, a quick question because I think I've actually meditated at Echo Caverns before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. So in character, uh, I'm going to be like, I know where it is. I can show you. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just past our pier that has uh, all the like food vendors and carnival games and stuff. And Clan Glow Girl's like, right, but Sword Girl said we were meeting here, and we're going to meet here, like, at the cafeteria. We'll move as a group. If we all start going separately, then one of us is going to get killed by the ghosts. Now the ghosts are real. Ghosts aren't real. I'm not scared of ghosts, Charlie. And then she, like, kind of folds it on herself a little bit. Yeah, what do you all do? Quinn is 100% just doing that, like, what the fuck kind of arms up motion, where it's just like... I just told you my best friend is a ghost. Like, fuck you. All right. Well, I guess I guess we'll meet back here after lights out. And Firewood Girl's like, yeah, like 11.15. Yeah, that sounds good. And Sword Girl's like, let's synchronize our watches. And then she laughs because none of you are wearing watches. <laughs> the day they make a watch that's big enough for me is the day that I'll wear a watch. <laughs> I mean, we could all just connect to my Wi-Fi. Would that work? Like, like you, you personally are like a Wi-Fi hotspot. I mean, my suit is. It's the best signal around. Oh wow, cool! Is there is there like a encryption key or something, or is it just? No, it's pretty secure. No password. Just you don't have to worry about any like schools tracking stuff. <laughs> what is it? What is your uh, your Wi-Fi? like called when i pull up the wife the the wi-fi menu uh it says uh uh it's like the like lightning zap emoji machina and then the same uh, zap emoji oh, okay cool and uh i connect to the wi-fi and the rest of girl power does the same they all like pull out their phones and connect we get a editor's note that says a few hours later as we turn the page and we see the group reassembled the group is a bit smaller Flower Girl and Fireboy Girl did not come with. So the group is Glam Glow Girl, Sword Girl, Riot Girl, Rascal King, Machina, Calico, and Mirage. And uh, the th- three Sword Girls, or the three Girl Power Girls, are in like matching super spy gear. I don't know if Riot Girl did that, but I know Glam Gr- Glow Girl and Sword Girl did. Did Riot Girl opt for matching costumes as well? Riot Girl did only on the uh, impetus that they have the they have the stealth costumes for a reason, and that's because I think Glam Glow Girl's parents paid for it. So, <laughs> oh yeah, does Glam Glow Girl have powers, or is she just really, really rich? I don't remember what we established when we intro when we introduced them. I think she's like she's kind of like a another one of those like light based heroes, like. She's probably like Dazzler. That sounds about right to me. I think I remember her having light powers, though really being really, really rich is the most powerful power. True. <laughs> That's what I remember too. I know she like her outfit has a lot of neons in it. So like everyone's in the matching like stealth gear and hers has like uh, neons like sewn into the uh, like seams. So like she's kind of like outlined in neon and we see her glowing as everyone else walks up. And she looks at all of you and she's like, what? I can turn it off. Who's the first to arrive? We've got the girl power group here, but who is, is it Charlie and Quinn or is it Amber and Max? I would say probably Charlie and Quinn, only because Charlie loves exploring the caves and would probably arrive early. And Quinn, like canon, has a crush on Fireboy Girl. So she would like literally just be like, we're showing up like 20 minutes early. Excellent. Fuck it here. I'm so sorry he's not here. I'm so sorry I randomly picked two to not show up. Glam Girl, Glow Girl wasn't going to show up, and then she got provoked too. Um, all right, so the two of you arrive, and everyone's sitting there waiting. Amber and Max, are you guys on time, or are you running late? I'm like five minutes early, but in the, oh god, okay, I guess I'll give myself a couple extra minutes in case I get lost. And I've been by Amber's side this whole time. Go team. Excellent. All right. So everyone is standing together. 
and oh, I'm in my old costume. Yeah, you are in your old costume. Uh, does everyone want to run through what you're like? Who is in here? Costume Susan Street clothes and what that looks like. Yeah. All right. Let's start with Max. Max, what is your general costume? So at this point, I am in what is essentially like a raccoon onesie, but homemade badly with uh, a lot of pockets and a belt. And then uh, to top it off, a plastic Burger King crown and like a red um, domino mask. Squire also has a red domino mask on. (laughs) Excellent. Amber, let's have you go next. Are you in costumes or street clothes? Oh, I'm absolutely in costume. Um, I've got a like a mostly white costume that's got like LED strip lights in a motherboard circuitry pattern. Um, And right now they're off. But if she walks in and sees like the uh, girl power squad has is like lit up with one color, she's going to go with a very different color. Excellent. All right. uh, Charlie, what is are you in costume or are you in street clothes? So Charlie's costume is just whatever illusion she puts over herself at the time. But right now she's doing crimes. So she's dressed in like all black, even though she has bright pink hair. Um, But yeah, she's like dressed all in black, ready to like sneak around and do crimes. Excellent. All right, let's go to Quinn. Quinn, what are you wearing currently? So Quinn wears like an oversized hoodie. That kind of like has this thing that comes down over the tops of her shoulders, like a almost like a poncho that comes down over her shoulders, and then like a hood that she sometimes wears down and sometimes wears up, uh, and then just like thigh high socks and sneakers, and that's that's her hero costume. Excellent, I love that. And then Riot Girl, we already talked about the stealth costume. Do you want to give any specifics of like what the stealth costume looks like and or what else you have? And you've got the big gauntlets on. Uh, yeah. So basically. Um... Riot Girl's almost always in costume. Uh, She's got like a set of like almost like a segmented uh, set of plate armor, but it's it's like a modern like modern day reimagined plate armor. And uh, it's got some high tech implants in it where she she just basically turn. She changes the uh, brightness of it. So so it basically just. Uh, instead of instead of reflecting light, it b- absorbs light. Ooh, I love that. All right, and we have this like group of people. I like that the only two people in like costume costume are the two new kids. Way to try too hard, guys. In like costume costume, as in like full suits. And Sword Girl's like, well, everyone's early. And then uh, Glam Glow Girl looks up at Amber and is like, wow, that's a bright costume for. Sneaking through campus late at night. Amber's just gonna like stare her down, and the LED lights on her suit are just gonna flash like a bright white in like kind of this like fucky way. She kind of like winces because the like blinds her for a second. And then Sword Girl's like, okay, so I guess we're getting started. We're gonna do the thing. Fireboy Girl and Flower Girl, so they couldn't make it. So whatever. Quinn, do you react to that? Yeah, there's definitely going to be this moment where Quinn is just kind of like, oh, well, what happened? Like, are they okay? And Glam Glow Girl's like, yeah, Flower Girl was too scared to come. And Fire Boy Girl has, like, homework or something. Ugh. Quinn is definitely going to have that, like, oh, yeah, he has always re- he's always been really smart. I mean, that's really responsible. Yeah, who, d- who does homework? That's, that's dumb. And Glam Glow Girl is like, Agreed. Now, Sword Girl, you had a plan, but Quinn knows how to get to the caves better than you do. So I think we should let Quinn lead because she and her cats can like show us the perfect way to get there. Oh, that was really good. And she looked, thought she was like being snarky and sarcastic. And then you were like, that was really good. And she's like, ugh. Like you see her face like drop and like, get this expression of like, I wasn't trying to please you, I was trying to make fun of you. Too fucking bad. Because that was funny. So there's definitely gonna, like, I'm going to kind of very dramatically summon a bunch of jaguars so that each person kind of has their their own. And I'm going to attempt something that I have only attempted, I believe, twice, ever. And I'm going to attempt to kind of, as each person is like, riding one of the jaguars, 
attempt to fly us to the cave. Excellent. For readers of Moon Harbor who do not read Paradigm Academy, the Echo Caverns, the cave uh, that we are talking about, is on like the far side of the island itself. It is a cave on the uh, on like the stone cliff side. You can't get to it from the top level, and you can't swim into it. You have to like land in it somehow. People typically grapple in, or you can fly in, as I mentioned. But uh, yeah. So Quinn, can you go ahead and unleash your powers to see if you can hold everyone and fly them? Uh, I can try. Perfect. Uh, let me. I got a nine. Does anybody want to help me? We do have one team right now. I am trying to think of a way how. (laughs) Yeah, same. Or you could just mark a condition. Yeah. That's right, I could, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. So yeah, if we're going to keep it as a nine, you could mark a condition, or it could be unstable or temporary. Uh... God, that juicy, juicy, unstable or temporary, though. (laughs) Please never phrase it like that. Uh, I'm going to mark afraid. Excellent. So the reason you mark afraid is as you all like, get over towards like the cliffside, you hear this like low, horrible groan, moan sound that like fills the entire page. Like we have the, what is it? Seven of you? Yeah. We have the seven of you mm-hmm. all like standing like at the top of the cliffside on top of the jag wires. And then the whole panel behind you is just covered in this like ghostly ooing sound. And Quinn, you hear that right before you all, like, start heading down a cliffside towards the entrance. I'd like to toss in there that Raya Girl has is riding two jaguars because she is, in fact, seven feet tall and buff. So we, I could just summon you like an extra large jaguar. Yeah, but it's funnier if it's two jaguars. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Wait, can Squire be where, riding like a tiny little one? Like a little lynx? Of course she can. Absolutely. Squire is riding a tiny jaguar. Yes! Amazing. Amazing. Does anyone want to have a conversation as we move, as we walk through campus, slash as we fly down to the caves? Uh, there's definitely going to be that, like, did anybody else hear that? Was that a was that a ghost? Do you guys have, legit have ghosts? It was the I wind. I keep telling you guys that I know one of the, like, uh, whatever. Best school <laughs> ever. Yeah, Amber and Max are probably looking at each other with, like, their typical big grins of, like, yes. I think at some point we got a panel of, like, a flying cat high five. Yes. And when we pull back after the flying cat high five, we are down one girl. There were seven of us, and Glam Glow Girl is gone. (sighs) But, like, are we, like, in the cave now? No, this is, you have not yet jumped off the cave. You're still in the, uh... You're, like, flying through campus. So I think we get a panel of you all looking around, and then you see her, like, still neon glowing, running in the opposite direction. I'm not surprised, and don't mind that she's not coming. Ah, cowards. Cowards! I shout. Wait, is it just Glam Glow Girl, or is it, like... Uh, Sword Girl's still with you all, so it's all of you plus Sword Girl. Oh, that was it. That was in general out into the ether because we know that Fireboy Girl and Flower Girl were not caught up in the things they were claiming to be. They just didn't want to come. Don't you dare talk ill of Fireboy Girl. Fireboy Girl is Fire Bay. I'm sorry, your crush is a coward. <gasps> you take that back. Does Hall make, make a card for that? <laughs> they fucking better. <laughs> all right and the six of you are at the top of the cliff about to jump down quinn will be flying you all down this cave or down to the cave and as you all are on your way down the cliff side which is pretty sheer and it's a pretty far drop to get to the cave you hear another one of those like ghostly ooh sounds only this one when it's drawn like actually goes outside of the uh like frame of the pa- of the comic panel it like extends across like more of the page it's even louder and even bigger does that sound like a ghost, a poltergeist, or a ghast to y'all? I'm afraid no ghosts. Sounds like my dad in the bathroom after Thanksgiving dinner. Your dad should see a doctor. Yeah, trust me, I tried. Just a look of genuine concern on Max's face. 
All right, so we arrive, or you all arrive in the entrance to the cave. As you all know, there's a like pretty straightforward shot of a path to this like healing hot spring. There was the skeleton of a superhero found there and their like healing energy, like the water is rejuvenating when you're in it. So um, yeah, uh, it's a pretty straightforward shot. Who is our leader? Who's walking in front of this group? Charlie rushes in. I'll be behind Charlie and I'll, I'll be like projecting as much light as I can with my powers. I'm probably neck. Yeah, Amber's got her suit like lit up like a, I guess like a, in a, a deep red. Like it's bright, but also staying stealthy. Max is tagging along behind Quinn because he wants to talk to her. Riot Girl brings up the rear. Yeah, I think Sword Girl and Riot Girl are probably in the rear together. So as we're walking, Max wanted to talk to Quinn. Max, what do you want to say to Quinn while you're walking through this cave? So you could summon cats? That's a really cool power. How'd you get cat powers? Uh, so it's a long story. Uh, but I've kind of been like... I mean, like, it's kind of already out there, but I mean, like, have you ever accidentally, you know, made contact with a dead god and then you, like, became their portal into this world and then they blessed you with powers, but it was all in a ploy to, like, destroy the universe? I think in a video game, but, like, not real life. Yeah. Yeah. And you can summon cats. Doesn't yeah. feel like a great trade, but cats are cool. I mean, there's other stuff that I can do. And then oh. I'm just going to, like, full-on go into my, uh, I, I don't remember how, what exactly I've been calling it. I, I've, either, I've been switching between, like, my corrupted form and my, like, harbinger form. But it's literally just, like, my entire body, all of my skin takes on, like, a magma kind of appearance. So it's, like, black with cracks and, like, flowing red. My eyes glow. And my hair turns into, like, billowing smoke. I think Max stops like dead still because I assume we've been like walking as we talk. It just stares and then just breaks into this giant grin and goes, that's so cool. Okay, now that's a look. Thanks. Yeah, this is like the other, the other side of it. I could also like, you know, eat people's souls, but that one doesn't really come up very often. I feel like that might be sharing a vulnerability or weakness, Quinn. Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> uh, can you read your team move for me? Uh, I will need to actually open up the book because I've been going off of something else. Uh, That's what happens when you talk to Max for too long. <laughs> yeah. When you share vulnerability or weakness with someone, give them influence over you and ask if they honestly think there's hope for you. If they say yes, mark potential or clear one box of your doom track. If they say no, mark a condition or mark your doom track. So then Max gets influence over Quinn and... We can do this out of character or in character, but Quinn, do you want to ask um, if he thinks there's hope for you? Sure, I'm just trying to think of like a, a casual way to phrase that. We typically, if we want to do it out of character, you can like ask the question and then like they give you the answers through their eyes is how we tend to phrase it. So we don't have to like stumble and make things awkward. If you That's don't have fair. a way to phrase it, I might have a way to answer it based on what you've already said. Yeah, go for it. I think, yeah, we get the panel of Max just like, open mouth like staring with this giant grin just if you are like half as strong as you look cool i think you can beat that god oh thank you so if that wasn't clear that was a no i think you're doomed no oh. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a yes all right so you get to mark potential or clear one box of your doom track my doom track is empty so i'm gonna mark potential perfect all right, and then uh, Sword Girl kind of leans over to Riot Girl and is like, that is the single scariest thing that's happened tonight. And we just heard a ghost scream. I mean, I, I don't know. I think she looks pretty cool. But, uh, you know, I guess if you're scared, you could always turn back now. It'll be a nice, fun climb out of the cave. And Sword Girl's like, I'm not scared. I'm, like, excited. The adrenaline is a thrill. Can't you tell? And when we see the, cl the close-up <laughs> on her face, there's just no emotion. It's just flat, not giving any emotion away. Oh, yeah, to totally. You're real easy to read. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, this is uh, so good. All right, and then we uh, 
cut up to uh, Charlie, who is in the front of the group, and Amber, who's now kind of like gotten right behind because Quinn stopped to like full morph. So uh, Amber and Charlie are next to each other. I want to say that Charlie, you can see that she's like looking around a lot and isn't really like so much paying attention to the other people in the group, um, but very closely like looking at the walls and stuff. Is there something you're keeping an eye out for? Okay, so I know everyone's here to like look for the ghosts and ghosts are cool or whatever, but the real reason that I come down here so much is because there's supposedly a secret entrance to like a bunch of underground caverns, maybe even a secret city that goes under all of Zenith Bay. And I'm just really trying to find that. Like if we find the ghosts and stuff, that's cool. But secret cavern, underground city, maybe. Or just underground cavern. Why not both? I mean, hopefully. That does sound really super, like, really cool. I want to find it. I've been searching, like, ever since the start of semester and I found out about it. But maybe with, like, what do we have, like, six people now? Maybe we'll find something. Hell yeah, I sure hope you do. And as we get that, we pull into the room where the hot springs are. Uh, The hot springs have a, like, slight bioluminescence to them. They glow a little bit, so, like... There's this like warm teal glow coming off the water. And as you get there, there's another one of those massive like, and this takes up the full page, but it is one of those massive haunting cries. We turn the page and find ourselves once more in the storyteller's study. The chalkboard once more occupies a large portion of the room, though this time it reads, I will not hunt ghosts at my new school over and over. He points to it in a very college professory stance and speaks, saying, So Max and Amber have left their fair town, and Paradigm Academy seems quite the crown of success and control, though there's something quite scary. Is it a ghost, or a ghoul, or a fairy, or something else entirely? We'll find that out when you all return for Storyteller Issue 10. With a dramatic flourish, he swipes the chalkboard clean, sending dust up and covering the last panels with a white cloud. When it clears, both he and the chalkboard are gone. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Hugh, and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year, or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. She can be found at T. Huth Playwright on Twitter, or T.P. Huth 94 on Instagram. This issue was GM by T. Huth. Charlie, or Mirage, was played by Vanessa Haas, who can be found playing the same character on Paradigm Academy, playing Scarlet Webb on LGBT and D, playing Coral on holiday episodes of Corpses and Curios, or on Twitter as Alpaca My Books. Quinn, better known as Calico, was played by Weaver. You can catch more Calico over at Paradigm Academy. More Weaver can be found in LGBT and D, and on Twitter at a uh, underscore apocalypse. Riot Girl was played by Thomas Fleming, GM of Paradigm Academy. He can be found on Twitter at DorksideVO. Machina is played by Elliot Peterson. She can be found at Elliot Elin on Twitter. Rascal King is played by Anthony Sheets. He can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. Paradigm Academy is a Masks A New Generation podcast, hosted by Thomas Fleming. Follow them at ParadigmPod1 on Twitter. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. The music for this issue was Super Power Cool Dude by Kevin McLeod. A link to his website and the license will be in the show notes. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please leave us a review on iTunes and tell a friend. Word of mouth and five-star reviews are really the best way for us to keep bringing these stories to more people. If you'd like to support us financially, check us out on patreon.com slash moonharborheroes. Supporting us there will give you access to bonus episodes each month. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue. The scene before we start, before we like get to the cave and start like officially like spelunking through it. It's not much of a spelunk. It's a pretty straightforward shot to the water, but regardless. Splunk? Is that it? I said Splunk. Yeah, I'm, it works now. <laughs> okay, you know what? I, I accept it. It's not much of a Splunk, it's more of a Spelank.